Welcome back to part two of Sheffield Live TV on a Thursday evening, Talking Sheffield, Talking Sheffield Sport, with these two, uh, Gary Sinclair and Sean Lee, with some great stories to tell of what it's like <laughs> to be the man behind the mic, the stadium announcer at either Hillsborough or Bramall Lane. And I did promise, well, by the way, uh, no James Gregg this evening. He's got a better gig once again. That gig, by the way, is one that you could still go to. And indeed, I'm going with my son, who's happened to be in the studio keeping an eye on me tonight. You've been the other way around over the years. Ashley, he and I are going down to Aberdell Park in Sheffield, the Aberdell Squash Club. There's a squash extravaganza, an evening in aid of uh, the Sheffield Children's Hospital charity with Nick Matthew leading the way there. It's starting around now. Now, uh, there's still some standing room to watch some real top quality squash if you fancy missing the show and going along to <laughs> Aberdell Park. But if you do miss it, it'll be, <laughs> it'll be on YouTube later <laughs> and indeed a repeat at 11 pm tonight. Gary and Sean, I did promise before the break we go into the origins of the theme music before, you know, it's identifiable strongly with both clubs. First of all, Sean, hi-ho silver lining. You know, well before it was introduced at Hillsborough, uh, in my disco going days, you can't even go to a disco now because <laughs> there's no such thing. But that's how old I am, going to discos. That song will be, 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 be played. It's a great favourite of mine by Jeff Beck, you know, going, going back. And you'd get a burst of whichever football team people liked and very often it was Sheffield Wednesday in the chorus there yeah uh, and that was well before it was introduced mm. by you how long does it go back to there uh, it wasn't me that introduced it I'm not I can't uh, I can't admit to that um, I, it's been there as to... long as I can remember um, I'm trying to remember I, I'm thinking ooh, probably Stevie Splash days <laughs> there's a name yeah yeah <laughs> I'm just trying uh, to or think even before that, I don't know. Certainly there for Paul Sturrock, because he used to say he sent a tingle oh, up the yeah, back of his I mean, neck. Uh, yeah, I uh, mean, yeah, it, 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 was, it, was, it was down, it was there well, well before. It's well before. superb. Back, back, in, back in the 80s. It's a great gladiatorial way, isn't it, to, it, to, it, to get the crowd going? It is, it is. And uh, a couple of other clubs use it as well. Yeah. Uh, Wolverhampton, Wolverhampton it. where obviously on Saturday that's going to be a bit of a yeah. pre-match battle when... Uh, when they play high yes. or silver lining. <laughs> it is uh, indeed. Always is when, when, when they come to Hillsborough. So the yeah, great exactly thing is, so. though, that when I've been to Molyneux and heard it, they fade out the chorus and let the crowd take over. I don't think that's anywhere near as effective as challenging the crowd to top the full volume well, song. Well, I mean, to, to be honest, we, we've tried that, but to be perfectly honest, it, it makes no difference whatsoever. Uh, no. It doesn't it don't make them sing any louder, I don't think. Uh, yeah. And it all depends on the uh, on the quality of your stadium PA, doesn't it? I suppose. Well, the PA system is excellent there, absolutely excellent. I'd say at both grounds. Yeah, um, we, we, we've we've had improvements this last close season at Hillsborough, so it is you know better than it was yeah. last season. Uh, still room for improvement, but it is it is better than it was. Um, so no, I, I can't take credit for high or silver lining. Although I can take credit for playing waterfront by Simple Minds for the team running out. Yeah, that's great. That's, that, that's great. That's, that, 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 that's that superb. Mine. And the music before you do the teams. Uh, yeah. what, what, what's that? Just tell me what that is, because that's the, the instrumental. Yeah, the instrumental. Uh, that's the theme from uh, from the contender. It was a uh, an American sort of boxing yeah. show. Um, it's like a slow rolling build up, and it exactly. It was great, actually written by by Hans Zimmer, who did right. uh, you know Pirates of the Caribbean, loads of film scores mm. and everything. Uh, but that was just. Uh, yeah, it was it was on it was on a few years ago, uh, yeah. and it was like a uh, not a celebrity show, but it was just like a, a boxing knockout mm. TV show <laughs> where the boxers sort of if they won they went through to the week after kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, uh, but, but th there was only yeah. about a thirty second piece of music in it that was like that. Mm. So we just took that thirty seconds and just edited it and, yeah. uh, uh, and looped it. Gary, tell us about your pre-match build-up, of course. We've featuring... never, ever played I.O. Silver Lining. <laughs> and you never like it. Never will. <laughs> they, would, uh, they would sing it at the lane if you played no, it. No, not happening. They, no, they would. would. They would. No, no. They wouldn't sing Sheffield Wednesday, would, of course. Have you ever yeah. played any song at Hillsborough? <laughs> uh, never. <laughs> never. And would you ever? Um, uh, probably not, no. I'd probably... Uh, what would happen to you if you did? I would probably be... Uh, <laughs> lined up uh, against the wall at Leppins Lane and uh, probably shot at dawn, I think. <laughs> I don't think I'd get away with it. No. I don't think I'd get away with it. Tell us about the history of 
and his song, the Greasy Chip Butty song, better known as, of course, never. It's, it's just in blaze folklore. Nobody knows who created the words. They think it started around about Stoke City in the mid 80s, but again, nobody can be that specific. All I know is that I know my predecessor used to play it. I sort of heavily revived it, if you like, because I just thought it's just the most fantastic football anthem. It, well, it's, it, it's, it's consistently it's a... voted, but, you know, in the top two with some West Ham rubbish being but it's, mysteriously getting it's to number one. But it's a wonderful song, Gary. It's a beautiful piece. The of lyrics music. are just melody, Sheffield. but it's a soppy, sentimental song. Though you could argue, but, it, uh, but football is soppy, sentimental, isn't it? I mean, it, it, isn't it? It, it, it pains really, me to say what, it, but it, it's certainly original. Yeah. You know, a yes. lot of, uh, like you just said, we, we do high or silver lining, so do Wolves, no doubt, so do other clubs. Uh, yeah. You know, but nobody else does. Z cars, there's two or three well, teams do Z cars. Watford yeah. and Everton do Everton Z cars. Yeah. 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 That is one strange song to run out to. But, and, <laughs> yeah. and it's fascinating going around to other clubs and seeing how they work, how they operate, and, and mm. like, you know, they, you know, other guys all look around and, and, and we're looking at and, and listening how they're doing their job because, you, yeah. you know, you, you pick up little things, best yeah. practice or whatever. We're no different. But you do. Uh, I don't think anybody gets it all spot on. No, but if, no. you, if, if you do get round the grounds and you pick the, the, the best little bit from everyone, it's all you do. It's nice scouting missions. Well, do you? I was wow. talking with Kevin Blackwell about the Annie song, and, mm. and we said, right, how can we just make it? That morbid memory. So I said, well, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll, we'll play at the beginning of the, just before the kickoff. Oh, I think that'll work. Yeah. And do you know what? It, they now do it home and away. And, and when I go away and there's no prompting, there's no music, but the fans yeah. do it. sing it. They do. And I'm thinking, do you know what? I like that. I, do I, do I managers cranking. get involved in that sort of thing? Do, do, do they do, get do involved? You know in Some, sometimes they do. They, they will come and, and sort of and voice an opinion. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they will say, can, can you not do this or can you do that? Or in the build up, yeah. can we have this? Yeah, yeah. Chris has picked the run out music this year. Chris, see, Chris Wilde has mm. picked it. That's interesting. You see, so that's that. that Kasabian that, that, Club for. And right. Yeah, yeah. It, it is yeah. fantastic tune. Yeah. And who are we to change it now? But I mean, the first two matches, I'm thinking. This is yeah. Like, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the first three matches, I it think, was like, here we go again. I think with anything yeah. like run out music, when you change it, you've got to give it. You've got to give it time, because you're always going to get haters, and you're always going to get people saying, "Oh, that's a breath of fresh air." Yeah. Um, and I think if you uh, well, for many years we ran out to Star Wars, and I used to get slated on the message yeah. point. Yeah, thing, but but it, it was original. And, and what what your fans don't appreciate is you have 35 seconds to make an impact. That's mm, the yeah. time from the tunnel entry to the line. 35 seconds. So mm. in that 35 yes. seconds, you've got to have built it up, and. Technically, there can't be any sort of lyrics in it because it, it, nice. you've got to have that instrumental yeah. wow factor. And and there's we've tried so many different songs and different approaches. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I've I've gone on American uh, theatre sites, you know, that was because they are the masters of stadium and entertainment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, we can't get Bruce Springsteen at half time to do <laughs> no, you know, no, a bit can't. of singing. And, uh, he has appeared at Bramall Lane. Though. Yes, he has, has yes, but yeah, yeah, we've got a new pitch after that, thank you yeah. very much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you you go around and take note and you take the best bits of other announcers. Well, I'm, I'm not saying that we go around sort of scouting, but obviously when you are at an away game, um, yeah, you, you do you do take notice. What about, there are some outrageously bad ones, and uh, atrocious ones over, over the years, who are just annoying and irritating. I would think that there are less now than there used to be. But you, it's deafening for a star and it's inane. Uh, I'm not referring to you two, by the way, and saying that. Uh, I think you, pitch it, you both pitch it just, just right. I'm not just saying it because you're here. You're not intrusive, but you're conducive. Mm. to the entertainment, conducive I, I think, and not intrusive. I think sometimes you, you've got to sort of try to be, I mean, I, I get accused sometimes by certain parties for, for being a bit, a bit too laid back, if you like. Um, but I, I think that, you, as, as you've just said, you can't, at times you need to be sort of upbeat, up front, and not so much in your face, but, but up there. Yeah. Uh, not too much, I think, because I, I, I've been to some grounds and I thought, this guy, you know, without wishing to sound sort of rude or obnoxious, just thinks that 
everyone's come to listen to me and in 15 minutes we might get a football game breaking out at the stadium yeah. just by coincidence yeah, and, and I think you can't you, you're not no, no. people yeah. have not come to see you you're just trying to add a little bit to their their match day experience do you get much criticism much much flack from from people Gary it's football subjective so I'd be lying if I said no that there are you marmite aren't you yeah um, I, I, I think as, as I, I think said the, earlier, the, the, uh, the vast majority of the fans appreciate the work that we do and the the dedication we give to the job because we can't watch the match and concentrate like it you know we, we've we've got police in one ear stadium yeah. controllers in another yeah. so we're we're on call right through the match so we're yeah. not there watching that's why i love going to away matches that can be me yes but uh on a match day i think the the vast majority and the feedback i get from personal you know media sites it yeah. is is very very favorable mm. you'll always get a, a small minority i mean uh, there's one on one message board it, it, it was convinced i was a supporter of the s6 clan and i, I, <laughs> really? I, I just wanted to just say look they, 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 <laughs> I've never heard name your before. price uh, the, if yeah. you've got one shred of evidence you know yeah. i'll tear you to pieces it's it, it just <laughs> It's just, you ever get you accused know, of being like, a Have you ever been well, accused of being a Well, do you know what? Uh, my dad and my brother are both Sheffield United fans, yeah. uh, but but all my friends were Sheffield Wednesday fans at school, uh, and uh, I used to go to Hillsbury with them. Uh, my right. dad did my dad did take me to the lane a few times when I was little, but I didn't really. Yeah. No. See, that's <laughs> another thing as well. The the, the, the job we have is, is such a privileged job. And we get access to areas that your average fan would, would just die to get. And and yeah. and oh, do, do you meet and do you meet famous players? And and <laughs> we we you know we probably take it for granted. And it's like when I'm playing golf with Tony Curry and Ted Emsley and, and Len Badger, I'm thinking, do you know what? As a scrotty kid on that cop, I I I, I was like that yeah. in reciprocal to yes. TC, like. Yeah. And now he's one of my best pals, and you just. You, you, you develop such friendships and, and the yeah. players, because we've been there that long, Things change. the players from the 80s and the 90s and, and everything else, they become such firm friends. So when they come back to the lane and we hey, help Gaza, you're still here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Do you know, do you and know they what? Be, I... become firm friends. And, and it, it's such a pleasure and a privilege. To be, uh, to be yeah. that close. And, and uh, when, when Oji Blessing used to come and say, Derek's his problem, I'd always, every match I saw him at, hey, Bodge. And he yeah. used to say, do you know, I'm, I love that way if you do, Gaza. It makes, yeah. you know, I appreciate that. There are times when you almost forget who they are, though. Do you find it, you've, you almost forget, because you can be quite casual in, how are you doing? And then you suddenly stop and think, this is, a, this is an absolute legend I'm talking to here. You know. It, Not just you, of the sport, you know, we, we get other uh, sporting legends at the lane. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, with uh, Kel Brook, I've lost time how many times we've introduced mm. Kel on us. But I can always remember the first time we, we got him on the pitch, and you're like, oh, cocky little kid, and I'm going to be world champ. Yeah, and you, 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 you say, yeah, of course you are, yeah, all right. And you just watch him progress. What, what about you, Sean? fantastic, what are you saying? Yeah, about? you were about to make a point on the back of what Gary was saying there about the people you meet and know, get to know and befriend. Yeah, I, I, I think you do, but do you know what? I, I got sidetracked then and started thinking about something else, and I can't exactly remember exactly what I was going to say. That's so. an interviewer's problem. I, I, it I is, it is. I, sh I should have made notes uh, uh, the same as you have. I was going to come to, uh, you know, you, you're working throughout the 90 minutes, even if you don't hear you, you have yeah. to be, yeah. uh, give announcements. Uh, you also have to identify goal scorers. And well, it, that is do, not always as easy as it sounds. Do you know, for me it? now at Hillsborough, it's, it's very easy. It's easier than it's ever been. Because uh, of the shirt numbers. Or, uh, well, yeah, I can see the shirt numbers now because it's a solid back with a white number, so that that's good. But sometimes, if they're at the, because uh, obviously, our uh, studio is in is at the corner where the cop right. and, and North Stand yes, is. Yeah. If Wednesday score at the Leppings Lane and 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 the players sort of got his back to goal or whatever, um, and you don't see it, and it's difficult. But since we've had the new uh, the new scoreboard, right. Um, everything that's all operated from from Preston, to be honest. Is it? Yeah, it's all done from Preston. They know the goal scorer in Preston before you do. All the audios from Preston. Yeah. Uh, I'm on sort of talk back with the director who's in Preston operating the board. 
uh, they've given us a, a monitor in the box so we get the replays and everything. Yeah. So we get them instantaneously. You do get mistakes though over goal scorers, don't you? Have you ever made one? All the time. I, I am <laughs> hopeless. Uh, I can't see the numbers on the back of the shirt. No. Uh, uh, this year is particularly bad. Can, can you do something uh, about it, Gary? Please. Yeah, you just don't say it. I, I, I can always remember <laughs> once. I, and, and I think we've just gone into live 2 and, and two one. Mm. And the scorer, I've no idea, but it's two one. <laughs> and well it, said, honestly. And you just have to literally, because even if this scrambles, I, I, I am in awe of commentators who, who somehow call it all the time and, and they, they get the names right and the pronunciation. And that's another thing, pronunciation. Oh. In the old <laughs> days when it was Smith Jones and, and now. Yeah, yeah. You I can remember the Greek team came to Bramall Lane and I thought, I'm, I'm going to be 15 minutes into the match here and I'll not have got to number 12. <laughs> you know what? And I, then uh, the longest name, Dupropopopopopopopolis. Yeah. I, I remember when, uh, when Sheffield Wednesday played HJK Helsinki right. at Hillsborough. And I read out the Wednesday team and I said, uh, HJK Helsinki are as per programme. Well said. Because yeah. they'd only put they'd only got <coughs> 11 players and three subs. That's, That's a brilliant They'd not copper. brought a massive squad, so I just said... As yeah. per programme. Because I had got absolutely no chance. That's very good, though. I mean, it's quite. Well, it's like any job. You'll make mistakes. We all make mistakes. We do. Uh, you know. yeah. it's, uh, it, well, it's, that's what people want to know about. It's, it's quite good moments, now. Bad mistakes, funny moments, hilarious things for you. He's, you've got a choice the, the, to make. The, 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 I've, there's, there's a long list, but the, the funniest moment, I, and I, <laughs> I still giggle at this one now. Uh, it was a night match, and and I had to give a prefix to the crowd. I said, "You are not going to believe this," but. Uh, would the owner of the car parked in bay 276 please go to bay 176 and apply the handbrake? <laughs> and uh, I said, then, uh, if you'd be so kind as to sort of leave a note on the screen of the car that you've just shunted. Shunted in. And it was just fantastic. Uh, and uh, it's a true story. Uh, and I was in this, I was giggling, just yeah. reading it. And then there was another one, a, a, a red Ferrari. Would the owner of a red Ferrari registration, um, W3 or something like this. Uh, red Ferrari in the car, but with your owner, oh, please go back to it immediately. And about 500 blokes stood up. I went, yeah, in your dreams. Like, you know, I was like, yeah. But it has its funny moments, like any job. So. I, sure? Do you know what? I can't, I can't think of anything. Because um, uh, there have been some funny ones like that at Hillsborough, but luckily I've not had to do them because the, uh, yeah. the the safety officer in stadium control would, would do them. And there have been, there have been a few like that. Um, I suppose that the funniest thing I've sort of had to say, or said, by mistake, um, so we'll talk about mistakes as well, uh, last season, <coughs> I think Sheffield United were playing Coventry, was it? Did, uh, we would have done, yeah. What, what was <laughs> the score? Uh, memory's gone. Uh, I think Coventry scored two or three in a really short space of time, didn't they? And Sheffield Wednesday were playing Cardiff City on the same day. Yeah. Uh, Cardiff City making a substitution. So the board went up, and just as I was going to start reading it out, the, the sound engineer that works in the box with me starts tapping on his, on his monitor. Look at that. Look at that. And Coventry have just scored the third goal. Yeah. By this time, the fourth official had got the board up. So I just looked, looked out the window and said, uh, Substitution for Coventry City, <laughs> number so and so coming off, yeah. so and so coming on. Um, never thought anything about it. No. And as I looked out, not even aware that you. No, no, I, I didn't realise. But Richard sitting next to me, the sound engineer, started absolutely sort of yeah. wetting himself. I looked out of the window, and the whole of the cop <laughs> were like looking round at me, going, "Well, I, I can't tell you what they're saying or what the, the gestures they were making, uh, but it's so easy. it was quite embarrassing." And then at, uh, I yeah. think at half time, when I went down or, or full time, whenever, quite a few of the players sort of said, uh, oh, "We were playing today, Sean, by the way." Yeah, and you were. Because what, 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 you know, when didn't you have make problem. these mistakes, you don't realise. But what I did, I, in fact, it was in the first mm. half because at half time, mm. I sort of went out on, onto the pitch to the stuff at half time, uh, and as I'm. Uh, doing the half-time scores, uh, read out the, uh, the, the, the Coventry score, and I, I said, and that is why I said what I said at the beginning of half, uh, yeah. during the first half. Uh, that's yeah. why I said Coventry rather than Cardiff, because yeah. they'd just scored. So, 
Yeah. I got away with it uh, and got a bit of a laugh as well. Yeah, I described yeah. Barnett as Burton in a, in a recent game. Just, it's, just, do you just know what? It's, it's so, and sometimes you do it subconsciously, yeah. you do it, and you don't know that you've done it. No. Um, no, we don't. I mean, you, well, we've got just over three minutes left. It's time to let you fellas off the leash because what you never get to do and not allowed to do is say what you think of the team. You never get to do that, do you, really? Go on, then, no. you first. Sheffield Wednesday, oh, what do you make of it this season? The same as last season. Uh, absolute pleasure to go to work on a Saturday or a Tuesday night or, or whatever at the moment. It's, 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 it's fantastic. It's great. And the enjoying the, enjoying I mean, the football, the, even though it's not producing the goals. It's not producing the, the goals, but I think, I think one of the main things is, last season, Carlos uh, and his style of football was a bit of a an unknown quantity to yeah. the rest of the managers so they didn't know what to they didn't know what to expect this season i think they all know what's yeah. coming uh, and things have not well, you know we, we we've been playing decent football but things have not quite been mm. but a pleasure to go right to work bit. oh yeah, yeah, yeah there's a man who's going to keep his definitely. job and I, I can't see any reason gary why you would use yours uh, lose yours in uh, giving your view of the oh place God, I, I, I think <laughs> Again, being privileged to get a fantastic relationship with managers over the season, and, and Neil Warnock and Bassett and, and Speedo and, and several managers. And, and this year, we've now got a great guy in charge. And, and Chris knows what it means to pull that shirt on. He knows what the passion of the fans are. Is everything connected with that club that we've been crying out for? And, and, and in Tufty we trust and, and <laughs> I like that. there is only one way forward for the Blazers yeah. and I'm so confident it, it's not not a case of playoffs we are going up automatic mm. and it's who goes with us I agree, and, and, it? and uh, it's just fantastic to yeah. watch the, there is a the magic has come back to the lane I'm pleased yeah. to say and it is there what are you gonna say Sean I was just gonna say have you ever had a manager that that you've not got on with or not good right. question good question uh, I've had managers that um, have been more aloof than others, and that, that, uh, that was, Dave, David yeah. Weir was not one that I got close to. It must be David. Uh, it, it must be that name, David. Uh, but others, uh, you get really close bonds with. It, what about you? Let's turn the question on you. Any managers uh, you didn't? Only one. Only one. Yeah. Yeah. Give us a clue. His name was David. At Wednesday, I can't. I'm trying to think. That's a gap. Who? Jones. Oh, right. I was thinking Dave. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. You just. Yeah, he didn't. didn't I mean, for all, all the time he was there, it, it was, you know, I, Gary will say the same. You always sort of, you start off, even if you don't get introduced to the manager straight mm. away, you get to know him anyway, don't you? You see him coming down. It's hard to get to know. I must admit, I would say Dave Jones. It's hard uh, to get to know. But, but that, he right? never, ever, ever spoke to anyone at the end of the tunnel, be it me. Uh, the, the police officer that's always there, the steward, the, he just, just oh, never. That's interesting. I was told not Let's to talk to Alex Ferguson, don't we? Oh, stop. This is yeah, I, 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 Let's leave this on and up because it's been fantastic to talk to these guys. I can't believe the time has gone. It's flown. If, it's it's flown. flown. And if you've just come in and you've missed any of it, it'll be on my YouTube channel this evening. It'll also be repeated at 11 pm. And it remains for me to say a very big thank you to Gary Sinclair. And Sean Lee, and thank you, it's to been you a pleasure for joining us. Great, thank you. Be back in this seat with more guests next week. See you then. Bye bye. Bye.